Hi, good morning. Okay, we're talking about boycott in winter today, okay? I think that there are seven things that you need in order to boycott winter, and I mean this winter. I know it's already almost February, but I don't think it's too late. Winter storm weather is still coming your way. I think that um, Team Boycott Winter, you, there's still room on Team Boycott Winter, and I would love to talk to you today about how you can join the team, all right? <laughs> Let's talk about how you can join the team. We're going to talk about why you should join the team, which is kind of a quick conversation, and we're also going to talk about how you can join the team. I think there are seven things that you need to boycott winter, seven things that you need to um, be able to not experience winter weather in your life anymore. I have it. I have these things. We're going to talk about that today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, H. Hafen. Good morning, LaShawn. Good morning, Alexandria the Great. Good morning, Knitten Babe. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Queenie. Hi, EJ. Hi, Kim. Hi, Glass Half Full. Hi, Haiku. Hey, Angie. Redeemed. Good morning, Nyrell. Good morning, Janella. I just wet, damp, dampened my hair. So between the I'm sweaty and and watery at the same time, but it'll be okay. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Pearl Pew, Elaine, Amelia, Mary, Kemi, TS. Hi, friends. All right, did I get everybody? Hi, Francine. Hi, Comfort. Hi, Nina. Let's see. I think that's it. All right, nice to see you guys again. We did it. We made it. We made it to the Caribbean. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Katie, and hey, LaVon. Okay, good morning, Kat from Rebloom Room. All right, we did it. We made it to the Caribbean. I'm here. I'm in Curacao, which is down by Aruba. I'm glad to be here uh, so that I could boycott winter. My parents in Delaware have snow again today. I think they said that, or not I think, I think this is their fifth snow event since I left Delaware on Christmas. I left on Christmas Day, which was just a month and what? four days ago, and I think they've had four or five, five snow events, like five snows. This one they're calling a blizzard, but Dover is in a nice little pocket where usually they don't get more than like six or eight inches, so I hope that's what y'all are getting. I don't know. I haven't looked too much at the weather reports because I don't have to. <laughs> weather for Curacao is always the same. <laughs> 81, 82, 81, 82, 83, 83, 83. <laughs> That's all I need. All right. Okay. So let's talk about boycott winter. All right. Um, quite a while ago, I experienced my first winter, my first warm winter. I think the very first time that I experienced a really warm winter was when I was in the Army, when I was stationed in Fort Hood, Texas. Um, I remember January. I remember New Year's Day. January and February, like Super Bowl. I remember wearing just a t-shirt, a short sleeve t-shirt, no, not even a jacket during the daytime. Um, and I was like, oh, <laughs> winter's not winter everywhere. Winter's not the same everywhere. I was in the army in uh, Fort Hood, Texas, 2000 to 2005, or I got Fort Hood 2001 to 2005. And that was my first real experience with not winter winter, right? Because I'm from Delaware and I lived in Columbus, Ohio for a long time. Uh, my freshman year, I went to Spelman College in Atlanta, but I think we had, I think I needed a coat. I think we wore a coat because I one of my, one of the girls on my floor was from the Virgin Islands and her roommate took her to buy a coat. So I think we still needed a coat. Um, but then something magic, but then I went back to Delaware and winter and then something magical happened. And, um, I went to, I'm sorry, I'm trying to turn off notifications at the at late and wrong. Uh, but then something magical happened and I went to uh, the Philippines for Christmas. I went to, I actually, I went to Southeast Asia from October through October, right? I quit my job to travel for a year on savings, mostly in Southeast Asia. And uh, I was in the Philippines at Christmas time. And there were Christmas trees and Christmas lights and decorations and Christmas music and Mariah Carey. Uh, it was Christmas time and it was 90 degrees. And I was like, oh, there's a whole part of the world that has warm winter, right? Like never, and not just warm winter, because like the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, they have warm winter because they're in the Southern Hemisphere. But I mean, there's a part of the world that never gets winter weather. Right. Like it just 
I don't know. That was an awakening for me. I was like, there are people who never experience winter weather. Things still bloom and grow, right? We get told that you have to have winter, things die out in the winter so they can be reborn in the spring. But that's false. That's a lie. Because those people never experienced that. And things were blooming all year, right? Blooming all year. So that's when I was awakened to Team Boycott Winter. That was my introduction to boycotting winter. And since then, I think I've spent one full winter in Delaware since 2015. Uh, Most of the time I've been in Mexico. So last winter, if you're a subscriber to this channel, last winter I was in La Paz, Mexico all winter. Uh, This winter I'm in the Caribbean. I'm in Curacao. Hey, Katrina, my parents went to, my parents had the similar experience when they went to, I want to say the first time they went just to like St. Augustine, my mom's people are from around there. And I think the first time my mom experienced that was when she went to, um, they went down to um, like the St. Augustine area. What's it called, mom? In in, uh, January, it might've been for a funeral or something. And she was like, it's 75 degrees. <laughs> I was like, yeah, girl. That's why people retire to the South. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that they had the same awakening. She's kind of, I don't know. She likes snow and Christmas stuff. So I don't know if she would ever be totally boycott winter. But she's she's getting on board. She's getting on board. All right. So let's talk about the seven things I think you need. Some of these are going to be no surprise to you, okay? I'm not saying this is a brand new, <laughs> uh, brand new talk. I'm saying I'm going to remind you. I want to remind you because right now you're reporting your weather, and I just want you to know you don't have to live like this, Alicia. <laughs> happy birthday, Alicia! It's Ali- Alicia's birthday was a couple of days ago, y'all. Wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> Alicia is in the in PG County, which is Maryland, right? Not DC, outside of DC, 21 degrees with fresh snow. You don't have to live like this, okay? You don't have to live like this. <laughs> I want you to know. So, Angela, hey Angela, 27 degrees in Kansas City. No. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> right. So I just want y'all to know that you don't have to live like this. I'm not saying that this is all brand new information. If you're, if you're around, you already know the information. I just want to remind you that these things are possible. All things are possible, okay? <laughs> Let me get my notes. Let me get my notes. Get myself together. Okay, so here are things I think you need to boycott winter. I think, first of all, the Caribbean is a great place to boycott winter. All right. Uh, I think this was a good choice. Mexico has a variety of climates. Mexico is a big country, right? So I was in La Paz, Mexico last year, and yes... It was nice. It was warm weather. Um, but there are parts of Mexico where it's not not going to get warm. I was in Mexico City just a couple weeks ago, a week ago. I was in Mexico City a week ago. I needed a jacket. And the wet, the winter, like, doldrums, the winter blues were all, were affecting me, even though it was still 70 degrees. I was just, it got it got up to 70 degrees in the daytime. I still felt like it was affecting me. Winter weather really does affect my mood significantly. I know some people don't have that. (laughs) Some people have it more extreme, right? But it really does affect my mood. It makes, it really makes me want to lay down and do nothing. Go lay down. (laughs) Go lay down. (laughs) It really does make me want to go lay down and do nothing. I'm a fan of doing nothing most of the time, but I need, I need bursts of time when I do something. We, we watched, we did our vision boards together. So you know what I have planned for this year. I can't do those things if all I'm doing is laying under the covers. And winter weather really does just make me want to lay under the covers. I really am a person who needs to be in the sun if I want to do things. I really don't do things without the sun. Right. I know that there are other people who don't feel this way, but some of us do. Yes, <laughs> some of us do. It's a real thing. And then there are other people who get sent into um, even more significant um, mental and emotional distress with terrible weather. It's called seasonal affective disorder. Right. So it really does make it easier for me to live my life in a sunnier location. All right. So that's why I'm down here. 
I'm down here because I have a lot of things that I want to do this first quarter of the year. I feel I feel pretty energized, but I just couldn't get them done in a winter place. It's just hard. It's just harder for me. Okay, so let me get to my list. Did I pull it up? Okay, number one thing you need in order to boycott winter, travel insurance. I'm going to start with this one, okay? It's not the first thing you need. It's something that you need just before you get on a plane, really. But travel insurance is an important thing you need, and I don't want to finish this conversation today without talking about it. In order to fly into Curacao, I had to show the flight attendant in uh, Miami, I think, Dallas, maybe. I don't know. I flew through a lot of places. I had to show her the my flight, my policy. They don't, my, my travel insurance is through Alliance. So all this time I've been with World Nomads. But when I got back to Delaware last time, my World Nomads policy was ending. So I was like, let's try Alliance. So I just switched for no reason, right? I'm not telling you one is better than the other. I've never filed a claim, still have not yet filed a claim. I will file a claim with Alliance uh, I should have actually done it already this week um, because of my flight delays from COVID. Um, but I've not yet filed a claim, so I can't tell you one is better than the other. I'm just telling you that these are people who insure long-term travelers, right? If you're talking about being boycotting winter and going to the Caribbean or going to Mexico or going to South America, somewhere else, other places, Australia, wherever, New Zealand, for the winter, um, you need a a policy, and I'm not talking about insurance that covers you in the event of medical. I mean, I'm not talking about a policy that covers you for flight cancellation and luggage, luggage insurance. I'm not talking about that kind of travel insurance. I'm talking about a medical insurance that will cover you in case you need to be evacuated, medically evacuated. So in the event that I need to be flown back or that my body needs to be flown back, I have an insurance policy through Alliance. I'm going to give you a copy to a link to the Work From Anywhere Toolkit. The Work From Anywhere Toolkit is full of useful resources, including travel insurance resources, right? The Work From Anywhere Toolkit is a, a toolkit that Rashida Dow and I have put together that has some helpful resources, including travel insurance stuff, okay? So download your Work From Anywhere Toolkit at exodushomecoming.com slash toolkit, exodushomecoming.com slash toolkit. It's in the description also. That link is in the description. So if you're watching the replay, hi, welcome. The link is in the description for the Work From Anywhere Toolkit. Okay, so I have Alliance now. I paid by the year. It was cheaper than World Nomads, but I'm insured for a lot less. With World Nomads, I bought that policy when I was bopping around Southeast Asia, snorkeling, driving a scooter. I bought a policy that covered me for things. You know, <laughs> I'm here. I'm not going to do a whole lot of things. So I'm, I have a very basic policy here. Uh, but those are you can get that at the work from anywhere. You can get the, those links in the work from anywhere toolkit at exodushomecoming.com slash toolkit. OK, so I think it's important. Not I think it is important for you to be covered for medical evacuation for you or your body. OK, seriously. It's also important for you to be covered in the event of hospitalization some policies will cover you, reimburse you for hospitalization abroad. Others you have to, others pay up front. So you need to know which policy, you, which kind of policy you need. And COVID, right? So that's what Curacao was checking. Do you have a policy that will cover you? If you come down here, you test positive for COVID and we make you quarantine in a fixed location, not in your little comfortable Airbnb. But if we make you quarantine in a place of our choosing, do you have a policy that will cover you for that? That is what they made me show. Hi, Nyrell. This is what they made me show. So all they asked for was I sent them a the email confirmation. I didn't buy my policy until I got to San Miguel. So I broke I did the wrong thing, okay? Because I had let my policy go, I was, was supposed to repurchase before I got on the flight to Mexico. I broke the rule. I'll tell you, you know, I tell all my business, I broke the rules. Mexico doesn't care, right? Mexico didn't, I didn't need it to get into Mexico. So when I got down to San Miguel while I was laying in the bed sick, I bought the Alliance policy and all they asked for was the receipt or like the email confirmation. You're covered through Alliance. It says something about the dates, something, right? There are, World Nomads covered me for a full year. In, in, a, in one pop, Alliance covers me for shorter bursts.
because I'm here and then I'm going back to the U.S. and then I'm going to Turkey and then I'm going back to the U.S., I didn't need that full annual coverage. It's okay for me to be covered annually, but trip to trip. You know what I mean? I don't know how to explain it. You need to read their website. Okay, so they cover me annually, but I have to go back to the U.S. every so often. Okay, this is not a policy for people who've moved abroad. This is a policy for people who bop. Okay, but that's all they asked for, Nyrell. She asked me for... She said, I need to see your insurance. And I said, they don't, I don't have like a card. Like my car insurance emails me a card that I could print out if I wanted. They didn't send me a card. They just sent me an email confirmation. I showed her that and she said, do, do, do. And that was the end. I guess she needed my policy number. And that was all she needed. So the first thing you need to be a digital nomad in these, this day and age, I told y'all I'm trying adult eyeliner and I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> I'm still working. I'm still working on it. So the first thing you need, travel medical insurance, okay? I'm not talking about travel insurance that covers you if your luggage is lost. I'm talking travel insurance that covers you in the event of a catastrophe, okay? All right, second thing that we need, anything in the chat that I need to see? I'm juggling my notes back and forth. Second thing that we need, okay, in this day and age, you need your... Uh, negative COVID tests. All right. Every c country in the Caribbean basically has a different policy. So you need to find out what their policy is on COVID testing to enter their country. I'm in Curacao down by Aruba. Aruba is our neighbor. Aruba and Curacao have two different requ requirements. All right. These are the ABC islands. They're called the ABC islands. They're both Dutch islands. And still, they had different requirements for entry. So you need to know your country's requirement for entry. All right. And you need to know the, you, your country's requirement to return. So I needed to know Curacao's requirement. And I need to know the U.S.'s requirement for COVID testing to return. Right now, the U.S.'s COVID test requirement is that you get a test, a negative test within 24 hours. But it can be, right now, it can be the antigen, the rapid test, right? So you could potentially bring it with you if you think you're going to have trouble getting it in the location that you're going to. Now, here in Curacao, they said before I could even book my flight, no, <laughs> before I could even board my flight, they sent me a um, list of labs and told me, make an appointment. I could not get on my flight until I had a lab here, an appointment here at a lab to get my test within three days. Uh, yes, okay, so I needed the negative PCR test to get on the flight within two days, within 48 hours of the flight, I think. And then I needed a negative antigen test here within three days. And I could not get on my flight until I had that appointment paid for. It cost me $20 US. So I think that, um, Kim, this distracted me. I lost what I was saying. So to me, liquid eyeliner is more grown up. It's harder, clearly. Can you see this? It's a lot harder. So I got one, one wing and I got one just like, eh, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> I call liquid eyeliner, grown up eyeliner to me, the pencil eyeliner, much easier. All right. <clears throat> What's going on in the chat? I'm just ignoring y'all. Looking at myself in the in the reflection and ignoring y'all. Let's see. I plan to backpack a few countries in a couple of weeks. I bopped around. <laughs> I I backpack without a backpack. I backpacked with a roller bag, but I didn't do it during COVID times. Um, yeah, so that's you need, but you need that insurance. I think this is what you're talking about. You need to have insurance to cover you in the event of a catastrophe. Or, right, not only a catastrophe, it could be in the event of anything, right? There are different levels of policies, right? One with World Nomads, they were like, do you want to be covered for a pregnancy? Do you? So I, so I Googled, if I get pregnant, what does it cost to have a baby in a hospital in Thailand? What does it cost to have a baby in a hospital in Brazil? I looked it up and it was like, I would rather roll the dice and pay out of pocket than pay for this policy. $2,000? In Brazil, to have a baby, I'll pay out of pocket before I'll pay an extra $100 a month on an insurance policy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. All right. I, 
I just want to try new things. Yvette, Yvette says, why? Eyeliner is not worth it. I just want to try new things. <laughs> it may be something that I stick with. It may be something I don't stick with. But I want to try it. Adele has changed things for me. This new, uh, so Adele has always been that girl, right? She's always looked that, she's always had her look. But lately, something about her winged eyeliner just has called out to me. It's called, <laughs> it has called out to me. And I want to respond. I want to answer. Uh, but I'm not doing the best. I know I'm not doing the best. I'm working on it. I, it takes practice. I'm okay with starting off not good, but I do feel like it's bad enough at times that I need to tell you that I'm aware that it's bad. Okay. But I'm working on it. We're going to learn new things. <laughs> so Professor LCH, you said this before, not to use the pen. So what am I supposed to use? What am I missing? What? There's a liquid eyeliner that's not in a pen. We need to talk about this. Are you guys on my Patreon? Cause this may be something you guys can help me with on Patreon. I don't think it's a YouTube conversation. <laughs> But if you're on Patreon, we, we could have an eyeliner session. Um, let's talk about Patreon really quickly. We as a community, the Vacarians, are raising money to send Black women on sabbatical. The first woman who we're sending on sabbatical is Maisha Francis, who is a painter from New Orleans, Louisiana. We are raising $25,000 to send Maisha on sabbatical. But one of the ways that you can contribute is by becoming a patron of this particular YouTube channel. Become a Vacarians patron on Patreon, and uh, we will discuss very important topics over on Patreon, including liquid eyeliner. <laughs> and the money goes to the sabbatical fund. As I said, our first um, recipient is Maisha Francis. So have I, do I have a link to give you? I'm going to have to type it out, so bear with me. Patreon.com slash Vicarious. E-A-Y-C-A-R-I-O-U-S, okay? This is in the, I'll put this in the description if you're watching the replay. I don't think it's in there now. Okay. All right. If someone doesn't mind clicking the link just to make sure that I did it right, you know, I don't talk and type well, okay? Uh, but patreon.com slash vicarious, there are three levels of patrons. The top level price is going up. There's an introductory VIP pricing uh, that the price is going up, okay? So don't get comfortable at that number. If you get in today, you get in at that number. I don't even want to say it now <laughs> because it's not going to be that by the time people get in and watch this replay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so um, Patreon. Yes. Okay. So maybe we can have the eyeliner talk over on Patreon. So Patreon, we'll be talking about um, things. We're not going to be talking about only nonsense, right? We're going to bring in some conversations that I just don't want to have on YouTube. YouTube is very um, data driven, right? They go where the data is. And I want YouTube to be very clear on what this channel is about. And I don't want to veer into other topics, right? Uh, I want YouTube to understand what this channel is about so it can continue to bring more women like you. Uh, yes. Okay. But so we'll do talk some other things over on Patreon. Speaking of which, I haven't introduced myself. Hi. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a year-round house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School, and I help black women take a sabbatical or move abroad on a budget. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe to my channel first. Subscribe. And then second, turn on notifications. Okay, seriously, turn on notifications so that you will be notified when I post a new video or when I go live with my friends. Welcome. Okay, welcome. All right. Okay, well, I can see it. I'm looking dead at it. <laughs> I can see it, Anissa. It's all I can see. Okay. <laughs> I got the Afro puff in. This is my summer weather hair. <laughs> all right. All right. Anything going on? They sell stencils. Oh, so is that what I need, a stencil? I would also like to try a little bit of false lashes. As y'all know, I want to get my eyelid surgery at some point. Um, and then I think it'll be time for me to do the lashes. Not full-on lashes, just a few. Just a few. I don't have a whole lot of eyelash. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. What else? Anything else? Okay. Thank you for that. 
Okay, thanks, Frankie. Frankie from Joy Route. Okay, thanks for the link. Okay, become a patron. Um, number one, you are helping a black woman take a sabbatical. Okay. Number two, we get to hang out. <laughs> we get to hang out and we'll do some activities that are face to face, like camera on activities um, where we can see each other and have a two way conversation instead of me like talking and reading your text, reading your chat. Yeah. Okay. I could. I haven't set something like that up, Ladybug. Thank you. Maybe one day I'll take some time and do that. That's a good idea. Okay, that's a great idea. If you become a patron, take a second and share that out in the world on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever. Take a second and share it out. I think what we're doing is a good thing. <laughs> I think what we're doing is going to become a huge thing. I really do. I think there will be a time when raising $25,000 for a woman is like that. I really do. You know, I think I can see the future. We've talked about this, right? I have that vision for us. Um, so share this out in the world, okay? So patrons hopefully will be will get money from white men to help black women. I've said that all the time. This we want money from. We don't want to be the only ones helping us, right? White men have have benefited from our labor. So we want them to give the money. <laughs> give us the money. <laughs> Come up off some change. Right. So the Patreon is also a way for them to put money in on a regular basis. Uh, they don't have to participate in the events or they will not right, participate in the on camera events. But it's a way for other people to give money into this, which I think is going to be a thing. I think this is going to be a thing. There will be a time when we're like, OK, who is it this month? Who is it this week? Who are we raising money for this week, not this year? I don't know how long it's going to take us to get the first $25,000 raised. I'm committing 10% of the YouTube Success Society income, right? So, you know, I, I coach YouTube things. I'm committing as a business 10% of my business uh, income for the challenge. Uh, so who knows? Who knows how long it'll take? But we'll see. We'll see. Okay, let's get back to, let's get back on it. <laughs> yeah give us the money yeah say it with your chest sir okay <laughs> say it with your chest okay you can tweet as wokely as you would like give us some cash yeah thanks thank you right yeah um okay what fun have i found in curacao dg so I don't do things. I, I, I walk around and take pictures of pretty buildings. And I've done a, few, a lot of that. I've gone out to a couple of restaurants. And I've gone to one restaurant twice. So I think I've already found my fave. I found a local favorite restaurant. Um, but I haven't done fun things. I haven't been in the water yet. I haven't even put my swimsuit on. I pulled it out and been like, I should go to the beach. But I have to take a taxi to the beach. Or try, learn how to take the bus learn how to take the, it's like a van system. I need to learn how to do that to get to the beach. So I haven't been to the beach yet. Now, a woman who I met in the Philippines in 2015 when I was bopping around named Claire, who is Dutch, will be here on Monday. Claire is, a, what is, Claire is exactly my experience of Dutch women. She is large and in charge. I don't mean large as in physically large. She's tall, but she's not like large. But I mean, she is in charge. Dutch women are in charge. So I expect next week to do things because Claire is coming from the Netherlands because it's a Dutch island. They can get back and forth. They're like citizens here or something. I don't really know. So she's coming on Monday and I expect to get in the water. I expect to take a take a um, tour, like a boat day tour and do some things because that is my experience with Claire last time. When we were in the Philippines at the same time, we stayed in the same hostel. One day she said, hey. Uh, we're going to dinner. You coming with us? And I said, yes, because that's what hostile life is like. I found out she didn't know those women either. She had recruited all of them <laughs> to go to dinner with her. And we spent weeks together bopping around Thai from Thailand to the Philippines. We went up. I went up into. We met in Ayutthaya, Thailand. Anyway, I'm just talking. We met in Ayutthaya, Thailand. That's where the hostel was that we met in. And then we went to the next place together and then we separated. I went to Chiang Mai and she went to Lao, Laos. And then we met back up in the Philippines and probably hung out for two or three weeks 
from going, we went to Nakpan Beach and we went to a few different places, right? That is, that is hostile life. That is what it's like to meet strangers on the road, to be open to meeting strangers on the road because you have let down your America guard. You've let down the guard of being a black woman in the U.S. and you've just said, okay. When somebody says, do you want to go? <laughs> do you want to go to dinner with us? You just say, okay, I'll go. And uh, you meet people who you stay in touch with via Instagram for years and years. So I'm excited because it's not, it'll be nice to see Claire and catch up with her. And then you guys will benefit because you'll actually get to see me do things. Because <laughs> that's the only way I'm going to do things. The only way I'm going to do things is if somebody else is making me do things. All right. So that's what I've done. I've eaten in restaurants. I've gone to the grocery store. I've walked around and taken pictures of buildings. The cruise port, right? I've gone there. I saw the huge uh, Aria cele celebrity cruise lines, Aria ship. It's humongous. I've been on a cruise ship, but I don't remember it being that big. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I could get 90 day. I'm pretty sure I... I'm pretty sure 90 days is the max. When he came, when he asked me how long I was staying, I said 90 days. I don't know if you can get longer than 90 days. I don't know if it's like Mexico where you could pos potentially get up to 180 days. Frankly, I didn't Google it. <laughs> I may, I must have Googled it at some point. Uh, but when I got here, he said, how long are you staying? And I said, 90 days. My actual leave date, I haven't bought my ticket yet, but actually, I plan to leave, I think, the last Saturday in March. I'm, fi I'm finishing winter here, right? I'm not getting on a plane back to the U.S. until winter weather is done. And I feel like March 20-something is a good date for that. I got to bop home for a little bit, re-up on some goods, because there's no good shopping here, as far as I can tell, so that I can be ready for Turkey. So that's, uh, but I'm pretty sure the visa is 90 days. I asked for 90 days and he gave me 90 days and that's all it. <laughs> that's all I know. <laughs> FDM says, I was, I recruited some Germans to go to dinner with me in an Atlanta hostel. That's hostel life. That's hostel life. I am not that person. I was not that person before staying in hostels, right? So I know it sounds strange to some of you. It sounded strange to me. But that's life in a hostel. If you go places and you are alone and you want to have some people to do some things with, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, I recommend staying in a dorm room in a hostel, right? You're just going to meet people, particularly in a women's only room, right? In a female room, y'all are going to talk. You know, you're going to have conversations. You're going to meet other solo travelers or other people with friends, right? Uh, you're just going to talk and people are going to invite you for coffee or drinks or dancing or drugs, whatever. They're I've been I've been propositioned for all of it. I have been invited to all of it. Right. <laughs> but hostile life really is underrated for grownups in other parts of the world. It's perfectly normal for grownups to stay in a hostel. I know that we think of it as a thing for young people, but it's perfectly normal. I've got a whole video on it and I'm going to talk about it some more. I'm hoping to get a good hostel sponsor. I'll tell you that. All right. I'm hoping to get sponsored, um, but it really did change my trip. It changed, staying in a hostel changed my trip in that I got to meet people like Claire, like people in in every country, I met someone new who I got to hang out with either for one meal or for a week, you know, um, and it changed meeting those people changed me. It opened me up to just a new way of doing things, a new way of seeing things. You know, I found out how much time the Germans actually get, how much vacation time they get. It's not right. They get right. Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. So I'm not saying today. I've not stayed in a hostel during COVID. Have I? I stayed. So I got <laughs> I got I, I got COVID January of 2020. Right. Before COVID was supposedly in on in this part of the world. I got COVID January of 2020 in a hostel in Mexico. I was in a dorm room in a hostel in Guadalajara. And the girl, young woman had just gotten off of her flight from China. Uh huh. She was a, an English teacher teaching English abroad in China. She flew into Mexico. We were in the same hostel, in the same dorm room. I didn't know what COVID was. She was coughing. Next thing you know, I got sick. Right. I'm not. So that's the last time I've stayed in a hostel, in a dorm room. I'm not saying do it today. 
I'm, I'm not. I promise you, I'm not. Even though there are hostels with private rooms. Yeah, you can stay in a private room. I'm not saying doing it today. I'm just saying it changed my, staying in hostels changed my trip, helped my, with my budget, of course, and it changed my, uh, gave me friendships and gave me a new uh, perspective on my own life. Oh, oh, new, new friends in your life give you a new perspective on your own life. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Katrina had a private room in Tulum. Yeah, so you can stay in a hostel with a private room. You still have a shared communal space. Hostels just do that very well. They do that shared space very well. Most hostels have a kitchen. Although in Australia, that wasn't a given. Was it Australia that wasn't a given? And then in the Bay Area, right, in, in the Bay Area, I stayed in a hostel in the Bay Area that didn't have a kitchen. Uh... Yeah, so they do. I'm trying to remember what I was saying. I'm really not doing well today. I'm like distracted. <laughs> that sunshine has me like <laughs> off. Um, yeah, so they do that. And they also do um, um, get togethers very well, right? They might have a wine night at BYOB, right? We're going to sit around. We're going to talk about what wine are you drinking? <laughs> In South Africa, that was the thing. South Africa is a wine region, right? So hostels do those things better. In Mexico, I went. I stayed in a hostel that had a um, lucha libre night. Every night we're gonna get to every, once a week. We're gonna get together, get on the bus, and go to Mexican wrestling together. So they do that kind of thing very well. Yes, it's cost effective most most of the time. In most places, a hostel is gonna be ch much cheaper. A dorm room bed in a hostel is gonna be much cheaper than a hotel room or an Airbnb. Uh, but private rooms pretty much cost what an Airbnb, what you can get an Airbnb for most of the time. I have seen some very inexpensive private rooms. Yeah. Yes. So, Crystal, girl, I got it. I even tweeted or right like uh, like my, the Instagram post from that day was like, New Year, pneumonia. I started January. It was like Jan I got in there like December 31st. And by January 2nd, I was sick. And I, that's what I posted, New Year pneumonia with all the drugs I had bought to treat myself. I had thankfully bought a mask and I moved out of the dorm room. Um, but then I, just, I didn't know what COVID was. So I did get on a bus and leave Guadalajara and go to San Miguel de Allende for a house sit. But I've never experienced that before. I could not breathe. And I was like, am, am I, I was Googling, am I too old to get asthma? Right. <laughs> Do people get asthma at 46? What is this? The Google told me it wasn't pneumonia because of the I didn't have the right colored phlegm. I don't know if I had any phlegm, right? Anyway, y'all know y'all know what Google what Google is like. But Google was like, "Girl, it's not pneumonia. It's, this is not bronchitis. This is not this, and this is not that." Um, I just didn't think to go to the doctor, but I did wake up gasping for air. I would wake up like like someone had wrung my lungs out. That was my first experience with the COVID. Uh, again, that was January of 2020 before I really knew what was what. And then this last COVID, I wouldn't have known it was COVID except the test said it was COVID. It was like a cold, right? So I had two very different experiences. That first COVID changed my period. Like every, it really affected me in a lot of ways. <laughs> it really did. This one was like having a cold. Now that I'm vaccinated, I think that makes a difference. And then the Obi-Wan strain of it is different so the obi-wan was different from whatever i had the first time so it's just a, it was a totally different experience um and then when i got to the air the ho house sit so i was in the dorm room i got sick i moved into a private room i went to, or no i didn't move into a private room i moved into an airbnb and then i went to the got on the bus which i didn't realize but i wore a mask i got on the bus and i went to the next place they were leaving and she had just gotten out of the hospital with some sort of pneumonia. So I think COVID had been around Mexico before. You know, it, it's not like we were the first Mexico COVID patients. But the lady that I was house sitting for actually had just gotten out of the hospital. And she was like, oh, you have that too? <laughs> I had some sort of, she had just been hospitalized. It's some sort of pneumonia. Okay, I'm just going on and on. We're supposed to be talking about seven things. Yes. I'm glad I healed too. I'm glad I healed too. Thank you. A lot, quite a few of us in here have been, uh, have had something going on lately. So I'm glad to, glad to see you guys. Glad to see you. Glad you're here. All right. Okay. 
let's get back to the seven things you need. You need med- you need travel insurance. You need the COVID testing. All right. This is an important one that Adelia would agree to. You need your flight booked through the airline or a reputable travel agent, not a flight booked through a third-party booking site like Expedia. Okay? I don't mean to only call out Expedia, but that's the first one that came to my mind. You know how you do a search and they're like, you can get it for 420 through this airline, but 380 if you book it through cheapflights.com, okay? Well, is cheapflights.com going to be on your side if you need to cancel your flight because of a positive COVID test or if the airline cancels your flight because they don't have enough crew because they're all they all got the COVID, right? What who is going to advocate for you if things go down? If things go left, This is why um, Adelia, who is Picky Girl Travels the World, says make sure you're booking through the airline, not through a third party. I'm going to add in a good travel agency because I booked this through a travel agency. I told y'all I'm doing new things. 2022 feels like abundance. Your girl booked this flight through a travel agency. (laughs) I'm doing new things, right? I'm doing new things. Hi, Tony. Okay, so I booked this flight through a travel agency. I have a business credit card with a company called Brex, and they have a travel agency associated with the business credit card. And Brex has, uh, yeah, and they give you good points and miles. Excuse me. They give you good points and miles. I knew I was going to fly business class. I wanted every single mile and every single point. So I booked through the travel agency. So Every time I needed to change this flight from Mexico City to Curacao, I had to go through the agency. I had zero problems, okay? So I'm going to add travel agency to the, um, to the um, list, right? Book through the airline directly or through a travel agency that has your back, not through uh, cheapflights.com, Expedia.com, whatever they're called. Not through your homegirl who says that you, she can do it for you, right? Is this a real travel agency, a reputable agency? I did. I flew business class slash first class. So, Rosanna, I talked about this. This was my flying from Mexico City to Curacao. I had two stops. I wouldn't recommend it, but it had to be done. I was going to get here. I'm getting here, right? And one of my flights had the, not only was I business class, but I was in the first class pod. The, the pod, that lay flat pod, right? Not a business class seat, like here's your neighbor with COVID, say hi. No, like the pod. This was my very first experience in that pod. I lay back. <laughs> I watched the green night. It was only a two and a half hour, three hour flight, something like that. It was actually the flight from Miami. No, from Dallas to Miami. I had the pod. Yes, I did. I enjoyed every second. I will take every meal. Give me every drink you have. (laughs) Ma'am, would you like a drink? Not really, but I'm going to take it anyway. (laughs) Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yes, 2022 feels like abundance over here. I hope it feels like abundance where you're at. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes, we're embracing ease. We're embracing ease. So this is something that I never would have done. Uh, a couple of years ago, even if I could have afforded it. So my, I wasn't making money a couple of years ago. I need to stress that. But even if I could have afforded it, I wouldn't have done it. Um, but I do it now. Right? <laughs> More ease. I want the lounge. I want to board first. I want to know that my carry-on is making the flight. Right? These are the thing. I want an actual meal on the plane. I want some space to myself. These are things that you get in the business class and first class that I've never gotten in on coach. So I'm enjoying it. Okay. But yes, to booking your flight through, um, get out of there, Kim, get out of there. Are you in, uh, you still in the Carolinas? Get out of there. Don't, Don't do it to yourself. Yeah. So yeah, I really enjoyed that pod. Yes. Y'all know, y'all know. <laughs> yes. So, um, if you, when you're booking travel at during these difficult times, okay, those cheap flights, those cheap third party sites are going to give you what you paid for. My, I was supposed to fly out on January sixth. 
could not get on that flight, positive COVID test. My second flight, I want to say was January 11th, could not get on that flight, test came back too late. My third flight was scheduled for, and then I scheduled another flight for later that day, and then I changed my mind and scheduled another flight for the next week. Uh, I'm going to say I changed my flight four times. It cost me $30, but one of only because one of the times that I changed my flight, I changed to a more expensive flight, and they charged me that $30, and then I changed back to another flight was the same price as the first flight. And uh, so she's like, oh, you get a credit with American Airlines. I'm like, yeah, thanks a lot. Yes, they make it really hard. If you've never had a credit with American Airlines, they make it really hard to use the credits. Um, so all of that changing cost me $30. Um, and all of the changes were done instantly. So with the, air, with the travel agency that Brex used, I did it on chat. I guess there's a phone number. I assume there's a phone number, but I just did the chat. Go, go to the website on chat. I want to change to this flight. I took a screenshot of the flight I wanted to change to. They would respond in chat. By the time the chat was done with their, thank you, have a good afternoon, I already would have the confirmation email in my inbox. So I'm going to add to Adelia's book through the airline um, step. I'm going to add to that air with an airline or with a great with the travel agency who's going to take good care of you. Okay. So that's, <laughs> it's Brex. That's funny. Bratz. B-R-E-X. I have a business, um, account with them. Actually, I may add that to the work from anywhere toolkit later today. It's not there yet, but I have a business account with them. I'll drop, I'm going to drop my affiliate link. Cause you know, I believe in affiliate payouts, affiliate income. If I'm going to tell you about Brex, the least they could do is break me off a little change. I'll drop my affiliate link here in the chat. Um, I'm new to business credit. I'm new to a business credit card, and it was a pretty simple um, setup. S simple setup and copy. I have no complaints with them so far. They gave me my business credit card, and they gave me a digital card so that the card I have physically is a different number than the card online. So if one thing happens, one thing goes down, the, it's, I haven't lost it all. Okay, so this is the my affiliate link for Brex, who is my business credit. Business credit. All right, no complaints with them. So this is my affiliate link if you want to uh, check them out for your own business credit purposes. One of the things I need to do this year is get to keep records and track, keep track of things. And I feel like having a business credit card that ha handles things is going to help me with that. All right. All right. Yeah. I really enjoyed <laughs> my first foray into business class flying. Okay. All right. So the next thing. Good. Yes. Okay, so the next thing that we want to um, make sure that we have, let me go back to my notes. We talked about the, oh, I'm moving slow, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm moving slow. I feel uh, energized and rested at the same time. <laughs> okay, travel insurance PCR test, flight booked through an airline or travel agency that will be on your side. Um, okay, so here we needed a, a uh, like a barcode thing. So some Caribbean countries, and not Caribbean only, but some countries require you to put a barcode on your phone so that they track you, right? So if some COVID stuff goes down, they know where you've been, who you've been near, all right? So I had to get the passenger locator barcode thing, which they told me how to do, right? It wasn't like I had to figure it out. But you need to follow the rules. I guess this step is more just about following their rules for COVID. If you want to boycott winter during COVID times, you need to know what their rules are and follow them. Curacao made it very easy. They have one website. They have like four steps on the website. Here's, they sent me an email. Do this, do this, do this, do this, right? You should get your travel insurance, get your passenger locator card, download your negative COVID test results, and book your appointment here. 
So that's this step is just follow the rules, right? If it's a barcode on your phone, get your barcode on your phone. If you want to boycott winter during the COVID times, this is a thing that we have to do. Uh, fifth thing you need is patience, okay? You need patience. I would not recommend during these difficult times flying places when you have to be back quickly on a specific day, okay? This mostly has to deal with the test to get you back into the U.S., okay? If you can get COVID on the plane on the way to your trip, on the way to your destination, <laughs> which I did, <laughs> and then get stranded there and not able to return home, okay, you need to have some flexibility. Thankfully, I work from my computer. I had flexibility, so staying in Mexico City was no big deal. It was annoying. <laughs> it was annoying and chilly, but it was no big deal. If I had needed to be back to work at a, on a specific day at a specific time, that would have been tra travesty. It would have been horrible. So patience, pack your patience if you're going to travel during this time. Rashida and I just um, went live in the Exodus Summit Facebook group yesterday talking about Turkey. If you're in the Exodus Summit Facebook group, watch that video, okay? Um, Turkey is, uh, I'll answer these business questions in one second. Turkey is um, still on. Okay, so Rashida and I will still be in Turkey Easter 2022, April 14th through 18th. We'll still be there and we'll still be hosting a meetup. Okay, but you need to know that traveling during these difficult times is difficult. Okay, if you're not going to be, if you're not going to want to deal with it, pass this one by, do the next meetup. Okay, but if you're in the Exodus Summit Facebook group, watch that video. It's about 15 or 20 minutes at least. Um, so I can't recap it all, but watch that video about our meetup, okay? Do I have a link to that meetup, to that video? No, but I, I can't link to the video, but I can link to the Facebook group, which is Exodus Summit.com slash community. Okay, so I would say Exodus Summit is a Facebook group for black women planning a sabbatical or a move abroad or digital nomad life. Okay, you're welcome to join if you're a black woman planning a sabbatical or a move abroad or digital nomad life. Or if you're already experiencing these things, you're welcome to join us. Um, yes. And so we talked about how the meetup that we're hosting in Turkey. Uh, so it's still on, but we want to caution you. I can't stress enough how much how difficult it is getting places right now and difficult it is getting back. Okay. So if you have a few days, this may not be, this may be a pass. If you're like me, you have a few weeks, MBD, no big deal. Okay. Let's check out super chats. How's everybody? Are we doing all right? Loving y'all joy. Thank you very much for that super chat. Thank you. Hope you're still here. I appreciate it. You know, I'm giving super chat to the sabbatical fund. Okay. And Wendy, thank you for that super chat, Sister Hoping Sisters. Thank you very much. All right. So, you know, I'm giving super chat to the sabbatical fund. If you want to give to the fund directly, um, you can give in the GoFund. Mm -mm, it's not a GoFundMe. In the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash vicarious. Okay. Lisa. Hey, Lisa. The fact that my kids are rushing me to leave for the turkey trip. <laughs> Do they know it's not until Easter? <laughs> they want you to go. They want you gone. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> they just know you need a break. I think they just know you need a break. <laughs> I don't know how you missed it, Katrina. Well, face, I know how you missed it. Facebook is a hater. So Facebook, there was a time when in our Facebook group, if Rashida and I posted something, the majority of the women in the group would see it. Now we post something. It's our group. We post something, it'll be like five people have seen this post, right? Facebook is a hater. They're not easy to work with or deal with right now. <laughs> I hear the warm breeze. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I really just can't tell you how happy I am to be here. I'm so happy to not be in the winter weather of Delaware. And I'm even happy to be not in Mexico City. It was fine. I really liked the city, but it just wasn't sunny 
and I was cold. I was chilly. I stayed in an Airbnb with no heating and air, which I think is kind of common. No, the whole apartment, no heating or air. I think that's a common thing in Mexico City because the weather is pretty s stable. It's in the, it gets up into the 60s and 70s most days. Um, so they don't, and maybe 80s, right? So they don't need air conditioning and they don't need heat. Uh, but I was chilly, right? I'm packed for Curacao. <laughs> I had to layer. I was only planning on being in Mexico for the quick the writer's retreat, and then two days passing through Mexico City on my way here. I was chilly, <laughs> so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. But y'all don't have to be jealous. All you have to do is come. All you have to do is get here. All right, so what's the next thing you need to boycott winter? Oh, money. Okay. <laughs> travel insurance, COVID test, fight, flight booked through the airline or through a travel agent the barcode or, you know, follow the rules. You need some patience. You also need some money, right? You need either some time to be here to boycott winter and not work or to come here and boycott winter and work, right? I just did a wonderful video on um, how we got our remote jobs. I interviewed five black women. Anybody here from that, from that video? I interviewed five black women on how they got their remote jobs. I think that was a wonderful video. It was a good way to look at how to move your own skill set, uh, to utilize your own skill set to get a job that fits around your life instead of you fitting your life around your job. Now, the, most of these women had jobs that required them to stay in the U.S., right? But if you can get a remote job that requires you to stay in the U.S., you, the next step is looking for a remote job that'll let you bop. I think only one, I think only one of the women was a, what had a job no, two. Two of the five had a job where, like, you can leave the country, right? And they were for, one was for an international, she worked for an international business, an international company. So, let's see, do I have the link to that video? I'm really proud of this video, and I really appreciate those women coming together to talk about this. I learned, I'm going to give you a quick recap, because I can't not tell you things. <laughs> Instead of just saying, watch the video, I'm going to tell you about the video. But one of the things that I learned was that tapping into your network will take you far, right? Whatever you do, wherever you work, it's a small world, right? And people go move from one job to, the, to another. They move from one corporation to another. A lot of these women tapped into their network to get the remote jobs that they have. So when you need something, you speak it out into the world. <laughs> you speak it out to people. It may not be someone you know who hooks you up, but it may be someone who they know. Uh, that was one of the best takeaways from the video, one of the unexpected things that came out of talking to these five women. I don't know that any of them said, oh, no, I, got, I didn't know anybody. One, one of five, right? One of five applied for her job the traditional way. Four of the five tapped their network to get their remote job. So that was really, that's a really good video, but I still don't have the link. <laughs> it's in the, it's in the description. Let's say that it's in the description. So <laughs> I'm really proud of it, but I don't have the link to it. It's in the description of this video. Yes, we don't need, work is not life. Work is not life. That's some slave stuff. That's, <laughs> that's some, right? That's, that's what they want you to think here in the, or there in the U.S. That's what they want you to think. But it's not the real world. It's not what I saw when I traveled long term. It's not what I see when I go places. And it doesn't have to be your reality. Your work does not have to be your life. Your work does not have to be in charge of things. Hey, Amy, get a plan. Get your plan together. Get your plan together. Yes. Yeah, networking was really, it really stood out to me. It was not what I expected. I expected them to all be like, I went to remotejobs.com. And that's how I found my remote job. Only one of them found her job on a, on a site like that. Yeah. Hi, Regina. So I have the vaccine. I'm not exactly sure. I know you need the two COVID tests, whether you're vaccinated or not. So you must not need it. But every country is different. So every country in the Caribbean is different and things change daily. OK, so you need to keep an eye on things. 
Uh, but I, I don't think, no, you didn't need it to get here because they everything said whether you have the vaccine or not, you need the 48-hour PCR test and then you need the antigen test within three days of getting here. Okay. Yeah, your work is not the boss of you. Your job is not the boss of you. It's, it's not. I know that seems strange to some people. We're so used to it being that way, but it's not. <laughs> and I've seen it firsthand. I've seen people all over the world have jobs that don't run their lives, right? They fit the job around themselves. They fit what they do around their life. We have to have a vision for our lives. We have to have a vision for our lives. If you don't, somebody does, and your boss probably does, right? If you don't have a vision for your life, your boss has the vision for your life or your spouse or partner has the vision for your life, right? You have to have it for yourself and then every single decision, every aspect has to move you closer to that vision. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's not, I'm not perfect. I'm not doing it well. Some days I'm not even above 50%, right? But I want, this is where we are going on this channel. We have a vision for our lives and we move other parts of our lives to fit, to move us closer to that vision. Yeah. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. It's nice here. Uh, what can I say about it? A place that I haven't really explored yet. Um, it's nice. <laughs> Weather's good. So I'm in Curacao because it's the least expensive of the Caribbean islands that I wanted to visit. It's not inexpensive. I need to say that. This is not an inexpensive place. But it's less expensive than other places. Right? We're not talking Cayman Islands expensive. <clears throat> And they have direct flights from New York. I flew from Mexico City, so it took me a million flights to get here. But they have direct flights from New York, direct from Miami. Uh, when I got into the airport, three flights landed at the, uh, close in close close together. And the cat taxi driver was like, "Did you? Which flight did you come from? Um, JetBlue, <laughs> right? Like they know the flights and they know the times and all that." And I was like, "No, I came from Miami." And he, for some reason, he looked funny about that, but. It was a direct, it was a flight that, I don't know, but he was like, did you come on JetBlue? <laughs> yeah. So JetBlue's having a sale uh, last week anyway. It, should, it might still be on. They had round trip for 211 from, um, from New York, New York to Willemstad, Curacao, 211 U.S. dollars. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have business class. JetBlue has a class called Mint. I've never flown JetBlue, I don't think. They have a class called Mint, but that you can't fly that to Curacao. I think they only have their regular seats to Curacao, regular and like premium, but not the Mint. Uh, but yeah, nonstop round trip, New York to Curacao, 211 US dollars. Crystal, what's my insight on driving around? Do I think it's doable? So everyone here rented a car. <laughs> Everyone here either rented a car or lived here. Um, this is a car. This is a car island. This is a driving island. I am not driving. That's why I haven't been to the beach. Like I'm in town, and the beach is not walking distance. And so I got to take an expensive taxi or figure out the bus. Uh, so yes to renting a car. It's doable. It's drivable. Uh, you can probably hear horns beeping. They beep their horns a lot. But it doesn't seem like an aggressive place. It doesn't seem like the kind of place where I would be like, girl, don't drive, right? It's not Mexico City where, like, I didn't understand. In Mexico City, on the street that my Airbnb was in, there was, like, four lanes of traffic going this way. And then another four lanes of traffic, which you would assume were going this way. But no, two of those lanes were, it was like, in the, right in the middle, there was traffic going the exact opposite direction. I would have... I'd been dead. I'd have been dead. If my job was to drive on that street, I'd have been dead. It was the strangest street. Uh, yeah, but this seems perfectly doable. And everyone here rents. Everyone. Everybody who's asked me, everybody who's, who I've come into contact with asked me if I've rented a car. Like, and why I haven't rented a car. So, yes, totally doable. Totally doable. Am I accepting visitors? <laughs> well, I was hoping to get a visitor or two. Uh, but I, so we're on YouTube. Let's save this for the Patreon. Okay. Let's save that for the Patreon talk. <laughs> so on YouTube, the answer is no, I'm not accepting vis visitors. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Alfreda. Thanks for empowering us to get out of the U S and expand our options. You're welcome. 
Thank you very much for that super chat. I will send this over to the um, um, sabbatical fund. All right, so let's talk about money and work really quickly. I saw, um, so we talk, we, we've already talked about the remote work option of working remotely so that you can boycott winter. I wanna talk about one more option and that option is running your own, is, is building up your own business so that you uh, don't have to have a job anymore. You can separate yourself from a job. It is possible to live a job-free life and have income. Technically, I have no job. I am job-free. Yes. And and stay, it's staying that way. <laughs> I'm job-free and it's staying that way because I've turned my skill set into a business. I talk to black women in uh, coaching, right? I coach black women and I can't remember the last time I talked to someone who had only one income stream, <clears throat> right? Excuse me. Already, what I know about black women is already you do something extra for money. Is it possible that that something extra could fully support you if you were all in on it? Okay. I have an agenda. So don't listen to this as if I'm some person with no agenda. I have an agenda. My agenda is for you to quit your job. That is the whole reason this channel exists. I want you to quit your job. Okay. I want you to separate yourself from work. I want you to have a, an extended period of time where you do nothing. <laughs> That's called a sabbatical. <laughs> That's my definition of a sabbatical. And then I want you to transition into you do something that is not tied to a job. This YouTube channel is a wonderful example. So I saw the question Peyton asked earlier, will I run the five-day YouTube challenge again later? Uh, Peyton's asking this question because I run a YouTube challenge called the YouTube Success Challenge that I'm starting again on, that I'm rerunning starting February 7th. It's a five-day challenge where women who have some sort of business uh, get together and we start jumpstart our YouTube channels, either start for the first time or re re renew, jumpstart, uh, relaunch our YouTube channels so that we can bring in business for our business, right? So that we can use our YouTube channels to promote the product or service that we already sell. This challenge is because I have an agenda. <laughs> I want you to quit your job. And I think the thing that you already do on the side is a perfectly viable way for you to support yourself. Okay. All right. For a lot of you, what I do would be a side job, right? I house sitter school. You'll be like, oh, yeah, I, I teach people how to become a house sitter. Right. But my day job is X, Y, Z. Is it possible that you could send that day job pack in? I think so. I think so. And I think the, the, the pathway to that is YouTube. So I am going to link you to the YouTube success five day challenge if I can get the link, uh, because we're starting that on February 7th, which is so soon. Gosh, it's January 29th. What happened in January? I lost, all, I lost the whole month. I lost the whole month. I lost three weeks just chilling in Mexico City, <laughs> not passing COVID tests. <laughs> so I think you should be on YouTube if you already have some sort of thing that you do for money that you want to expand, YouTube is probably the way. So join the challenge at vicarious.com slash challenge. I'll put that link in the description if you're watching the replay, okay? So the pathway for you to boycott winter, I think could be either a remote job or no work. Some of you don't have to work, okay? You just need to take a look at the numbers. Some of you don't have to work. Or starting or growing your own thing that you can do on your own terms, your own business. Okay. That's what house sitter school has done for me. I'm here because of house sitter school and my YouTube channel. I'm not house sitting, believe it or not. I'm not house sitting. I'm in a location and I'm not house sitting. I'm paying for this place. I'm paying for this Airbnb. I'm paying for it because I have a YouTube channel that supports me. Yeah. I have a YouTube channel that supports me and it, and it makes my business, it drives my business. My YouTube channel supports me and brings business to house sitter school. All right. Like I said, I can't remember the last time I talked to someone and she said, Oh no, I only have this job. That's just not a black woman thing. If it's you, I'm glad. 
I love that for you. I'm not telling everyone to start a business. I'm not. I'm not. I am team do as little as possible. If your job supports you, your job supports you. I'm not telling you to start a business. What I'm saying is if you already have a business and you have a job, I want you to let the job go. I want you to let it go. I want you to come up with a plan. I'm not saying let it go today, but I want you to come up with a plan. One, one of the steps in the plan is the YouTube Success 5-Day Challenge. Rashida and I just finished the Get Your Next 3 Clients Challenge, which is a very complimentary challenge, right, for business owners. Uh, so we just finished the Get Your Next 3 Clients Challenge, and I'm going into the YouTube Success Challenge, and I hope that you'll join us, okay? If you go to vicarious.com slash challenge, you'll see some frequently asked questions, so it'll answer some of your questions. But we're meeting February 7th through 11th. 3 p.m. Eastern time on Zoom. And you have to be, you, your channel does not have to exist yet, but you have to be willing to make a channel, a, a video during the challenge. The challenge is not helpful to you if you're not willing to put up a video. Yes, I want you to let it go. I want you to let it go, Kat. Yeah, so Kat was just in the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge. We... I think we overestimate what we would need to let our jobs go, right? If you already provide a service or a product and you already have pricing, pull out your calculator. How many clients do you actually need to let that job go? Like seriously, how many clients do you actually need? Maybe a whole lot less than you think. If it's a whole lot of clients, are you charging the right amount, right? Don't use my pricing as a pricing guide. <laughs> I want white men to pay me. That's why my prices are so low. I don't. I want more money to come from the white men. I want corporate sponsors. But now we're getting off topic. Uh, but yeah, how many do you actually need? If you like Rosanna with Waffle Cat Studios, right? Rosanna designs websites, right? She's not. She's not getting seventy, sixty-seven bucks per client like like I get, right? So how many clients do you really need? to let that job go, right? Cat runs retreats, right? These retreats, retreats, are, these are not $20 <laughs> retreats, right? So how many people, how many clients do you actually need to let it go? <laughs> I hope, I'm glad you're excited, but I want to, let's take some action. Take some action today. Take some action today, okay? So what we need to boycott winter, we need money <laughs> either from a job or from alimony just cash that's sitting around that you found <laughs> right you need money and then you need some boycott winter merch ah so this is a fun one number seven is super fun okay so we now we have boycott winter merch which you may see on the bottom merch shelf of this channel but i made a full link at vicarious.com slash merch so we've got boycott winter merch uh, which I'm going to link to very easily when I find it. Yes. Okay, so all of the money from my merch. So I told you I'm giving 10% of the YouTube challenge money. YouTube's all of my YouTube coaching money. 10% of that is going to the sabbatical fund. I'm also giving all the merch money to the sabbatical fund. Okay, if I think you should take a second and open that link now. Oh, let me see if I can show it to you. I have good internet. Let's see if I can show it to you now. We've got some merch, y'all. Merch, vicarious.com slash merch. Let's see. I'm, see. I'm going to try to share my screen with you. Okay, all of the money from them, all of the proceeds from the merch goes to the sabbatical fund. Let's see. What can you see? Y'all can see that? I have an extra screen on top of mine, but I don't think you can see the extra screen. Yeah. All right. So y'all can see that we've got uh, a hoodie. This hoodie gives black women a break. <laughs> I think that's super cute. Ten dollars from the sale of the hoodie, all of which is all the profits. Ten dollars from the sale of the hoodie goes to that sabbatical fund. This is on spread shop. So, you know, spread shop prints and ships and all of that. So they get the mo they get the bulk of the money. Don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Most of the money goes to spread shop, but ten dollars from each hoodie goes to the sabbatical fund. All right, we've got t-shirts. This t-shirt gives black women a break. Uh, these jobs ain't loyal sweatshirts. Uh, these jobs ain't loyal t-shirts. 
and boycott winter t-shirts and bags. All right, that's at vicarious.com slash merch. Okay, you can see it. Thanks, Halisi. Yeah, all right. So that's vicarious.com slash merch. All of the proceeds from the shop goes to the sabbatical fund um, on the, on the, um, this t-shirt gives black women a break, right? Those are $10. That's $10 per, right? This hoodie, that's $10 per. And then the other things are a little less. I'm going to actually be raising some prices later, but not yet. So that everything is $10. But right now these, these are $10 to the fund. And then the others are less. Some of the other t-shirts are like four or six or $8. Okay. Okay. I love this shirt. I can't wait to get back to the U.S. to get it. I Actually, I may try this out because I'm here. Well, I'm not at the same address, though. I may try this out. I may try to ship this here because spread shirts can ship it wherever. This is not a U.S. only thing. So I might try to, sh to get a shirt so that I can have it while I'm here. I love this shirt. This T-shirt gives black women a break. I love that. I love this shirt. I can't wait to get mine. I love it. Yeah, so that's what we're doing now. This is where we're moving now as a channel. We're moving to... Oh, wait, wait, I lost you. We're moving to... Um, we, as a channel, send black women on sabbatical. So, yes, we're still here to teach you how to do it, okay? But we're actually putting our, our money to work. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's what you need to boycott winter. You need, uh, let me go back to my list. To boycott winter, you need travel, medical insurance that will protect you in the event of evacuation, medical evacuation or hospitalization, inclu including COVID hospitalization or COVID, um, what's it called, quarantine. You need the PCR test. For the, most of the Caribbean, you need the PCR test before you go. And then for some of the Caribbean, you also need the antigen test after you get here. Uh, you need your flight booked through the airline or a reputable travel agent, not through like Expedia or Travelocity, not through a third party who is going to be really, really difficult to deal with if things go bad. You need to follow the rules. For here, that meant uploading a barcode to my phone so that they could track me. They know where I am. They know who I've been in close contact with. They know what I'm doing. If things go bad here, they if somebody I know, if somebody, if I have COVID or somebody, if I come in contact with somebody with COVID, they can contact me. Number five, you need to pack your patients. All right. It's a difficult time. I think so we talked about um the flights being so expensive, so inexpensive, two hundred eleven dollars round trip from New York to Curacao right now. Uh, but this is not a time to take a three day trip when you need to be back to work on day four. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, if you need to have a plan for if you get here and then test positive for COVID and can't get back on the flight to the U.S. Because not only are the COVID tests required to get here, but getting back to the U.S., you need a negative test as well. Okay, so you need to have, be able to have some free time and some plans, some backup plans. Uh, number five, you need the money. <laughs> to boycott winter in the Caribbean, you need the money. That might be a remote job. So watch my remote job video. It's called these... No, it's called Five Black Women Share How We Got Our Remote Jobs. It's really helpful, okay? That video is linked in the description. If you don't want a job, if you like me, <laughs> I don't even want no job, then join me in the YouTube Success 5-Day Challenge, vicarious.com slash challenge. If you are looking to grow a business and you think you can find clients from YouTube, spoiler alert, you can, Okay. Join me in the challenge. The challenge is five days of learning how to teach YouTube who your channel is for. We specifically pick out a video that's doing really well on YouTube that our ideal audience is already watching. And then we teach YouTube that our channel, our video is related to that video, right? It's a simple method. It's one I do over and over and over again. In fact, the five five, these five women, it's called five women share how we got our remote jobs. I did that on that video. You can see, if you look at my channel right now, you see the video I made before it maybe has 5,000 views. 
the video I made after it, which is just a live, a quick live stream, maybe has six or 7,000 views, but that video has at least 35,000 views already, right? It'll hit 100,000 views in two or three weeks, right? Because I know how to tell YouTube this video is related to this other popular video. Now, help me. <laughs> Algorithm, help me. That's what we do in the challenge. Uh, my work, you know, what's it called? Worst countries for black travelers video is going to hit a million views very soon. Uh, that's a video where I did that. The first video, I think, example of me teaching YouTube, hey, I'm related to this other popular video, is a video I have called Countries Where Black Travelers Feel Welcome. When I made that video, I had 26 subscribers and that I built my channel off the strength of that video. My, my, my first, I got to monetization off of that video performing really well, right? So this is what we do in the challenge. If you feel like you are afraid to start a YouTube channel, this is why you join a challenge, right? If you want to do it, you're just afraid. You join a challenge because you get to be in community with other people who are feeling the exact same way at the exact same time. And y'all just take the leap together. Yeah, you just do it together, right? We're just, we're going to do this together. I'm afraid. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm this, I'm that. We're going to get in. We're going to do this together. That's why you do it. All right. But there's some, I answered some questions in the FAQ. So you can go over there and check out the frequently asked questions. Mm. Okay. So this is the other way that we have been giving money to the sabbatical fund. Cash app. Because YouTube does take a good cut. I think YouTube takes 40% or 30% or 50%. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. When you, when you guys leave, um, when you do super chat, I make up the difference, right? So if you super chat me 20 bucks, I know YouTube is going to take a cut. But I just moved 20 bucks over to the fund because I know YouTube is taking a big cut. And you wanted 20 bucks to go to the fund. But the best way to do this so that YouTube doesn't take that big cut is to cash app me money. I'm looking to make sure I give you the right cash app. My cash app is dollar sign. S Perry 302. Dollar sign S Perry 302. We have some regulars who cash app every week. Um, and that's the, that's the way to send the money to the fund with no fee one time. Right. So if you want to give a one time gift to the sabbatical, to the black women, uh, -uh vacarians sabbatical fund, you can cash app it to S Perry 302 dollar sign S Perry 302. But I think you should join the Patreon. Like, seriously, the lowest, the, the most inexpensive tier is three dollars per month. I think you should join the Patreon because we're going to do this continually, repeatedly. Once we raise the twenty five thousand dollars from Aisha, we'll move on to the next woman. Um. Yeah, that way you don't have to keep cash apping me. <laughs> right? It's done and it's in there. I'm getting notifications. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, friends. Uh, but yeah, I think the Patreon is going to be fun. We're going to spend some time hanging out where we can hang out together, right? Where we can all be on camera. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. That Patreon is patreon.com slash vicarious. First up, eyeliner. <laughs> First, we'll be learning how to put on eyeliner like a grown-up. No, but we're going to, it'll be, it'll be very, it'll be the kinds of videos that, it'll be the, the kinds of conversations, live conversations that I think I just don't want on a YouTube channel, right? Either because I don't want everybody to be in our business um, or because it's just not, some things YouTube's algorithm, like Talking dating, for example. Uh, I don't want the algorithm to send me a bunch of men, which is what will happen if I start to make dating videos. You know what I'm saying? Y'all understand. Uh, so there will be conversations very similar to what we talk about here, but just the kinds of things that I want to keep out um, keep out of YouTube, keep off of YouTube. I'll have to look this up, Stephanie. Be careful with Cash App, new tax laws. Okay, I'll look it up. I report my I report things. I'm not I'm not a scofflaw. I promise. I file taxes and I report things. I do. <laughs> I do. Don't worry. 
or you know, it's nice to worry. I mean, it's nice that you're concerned, but I, I am not. Um, I'm not trying to hide the money from anybody. <laughs> Welcome, Janella. Thank you. We were at 16 patrons. I just so you guys. Someone asked me to put the Patreon up. I'm going to say three or four weeks ago. I just did it this week. We're already at 16, and I'm just telling you about it now. So it's good. I think that we're at a point right now where. Uh, every hundred months, we can send a woman on sabbatical uh, without the other stuff, without the merch and all of that. So we're going to get that number down, I think, three months. I think there'll be a time when we can send a woman on sabbatical every quarter. Um, yeah, that's what I see happening. That's what I see happening. <laughs> I'll look into it. I'll look into the what's going on. But I report things. I know that PayPal, like PayPal always, always reports your earnings. I have no problem with that. Report it. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we need it. I mean, we need it. I, 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 we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Hi, Yvette. Do I have a video on cost-effective airline travel? No. I have a video on tools that I like, and one of them is that I like Momondo momondo.com, which is also in the work from anywhere toolkit. I think, I think we linked to them. Um, I think we've, so I know. So I think you're talking about points though, not, so I don't have a video on points. Someone does. Right. So in the, in Exodus summit, we talked with Victoria Walker from the points guy she came and did a session for us on points and miles, but I've not. I've not done that yet. Anybody want to come and talk about that? <laughs> uh, so no, not yet. Okay. Yes, Frankie from the Joy Route took the YouTube success challenge. It is. I'm not telling you. I'm, I would not waste your time on a week of work if I thought it wasn't going to pay off. Okay. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do things... <laughs> I don't do things, period. I definitely don't do things if I don't think it's going to be beneficial. I'm not a person who does things just to be doing them for work's sake. I put the challenge together because I know it's helpful. I coach women. I do one-on-one -on -one calls and group coaching with women. And I see the needs. And I'm like, well, let's see. Let's make something. Let's make a thing so that we can stop having this need, right? It hurts me when I see someone have a YouTube channel for two years and it's not growing. It hurts me, right? That's a lot of time and effort that you've put into those videos. Uh, I don't want that for you. I don't want it for me and I don't want it for you. So I put the challenge together because I learned some things and I want to share those things with you. Same reason this whole channel exists. Yeah, we want to share some things. Yes, I have the vision. Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. So I have been negligent in some things. My entire time in Mexico was supposed to be time to jumpstart the year. I didn't do it. I laid around. So I think corporate sponsors are are the key to us being able to do this repetitively, but also us, right? I don't want I'm not discounting what three dollars a month does, right? There are eighty thousand subscribers on this channel, right? If I could get a dollar from everyone, just one dollar from every subscriber at one time. That's almost three, that's more than three sabbaticals, right? So I'm not discounting what we can do individually, but I need to do my part by reaching out to some sponsors and uh, February is going to be that. Okay. How did I do in the chat today? It's already, wow, time really flew today. I knew I wasn't like going speedy quick, but I feel like time really flew. Let's see. I'm scrolling back in the other direction. Let's see. When did you... Hi, Kat. I'm sorry. This thing is covering it. When did you say you will answer questions about setting up a YouTube channel? Because I have some questions about how to do it. So, okay. If you just need the basics, we can do that. I'm trying to think this through. Okay. 
be okay. If you need a one-on-one call with me to talk about your, okay, if you if you need clarity on what your channel is about, who it's for, then I think start with a one-on-one call. Okay. Vacarious.com slash call me. Let's work through this. Okay. Because I don't want to send people to the wrong thing. If you, yes. If you need one-on-one time to work out what your channel is going to be about and who it's going to be for, vacarious.com slash call me. Book a one-on-one session. Okay. But that, but your question was more about walking you through. So if you, if you're in the challenge, uh, I have Clarice who is tech support. Clarice will, will walk everyone in the challenge through actually setting up their channel. If you need help with that, what, what do you, okay. Tell me cat, if I've answered your question. Okay. So if you need one-on-one time with me about, if you, if what, if what you mean by setting up your channel is what is my channel about? Who is it for? One-on-one call with me. Okay. If you already know what your channel is about and who it's for, join the challenge. Vicarious.com slash challenge. Okay. So that we can walk through the setup process and the learning of the YouTube algorithm together. How's that? How did I do? If I didn't answer your question, ask it in a different way. Okay. And then Patreon. So Patreon, Patreon is for supporting black women on sabbatical, right? All of the money on Patreon goes to the sabbatical fund for a black woman. The first woman that we're sending is Maisha Francis, uh, a New Orleans painter. We are sending Maisha on sabbatical when we get to 25K. We're at 5K, I think now. We're 20% of the way. Uh, When we get to 25K, boom, Maisha's on sabbatical. Um, the Patreon, what, what will we do on Patreon? We will be doing live streams with where you can also on camera live conversations, right? On camera live Q and A's. So the first tier will get the replay of the Q and A's. This, this middle and second tier of patrons will get on camera live Q and A time where we can have conversation where we, you can ask your questions and, you know, uh, you all know what live Q&A is. I'm saying on camera. Okay. And then the top tier, which is called VIP, but that's what P- Patreon calls them. The VIP, well, I'll change that. I don't like that. Um, but the top tier will also be joining in on my channel with me. <laughs> we'll do a variety show like every quarter. And everyone who is that level of patron will get so many minutes <laughs> on my channel. Uh, yeah. I don't really know how it's going to go. Sonia Apologetic. Sonia Apolo- Sonia Unapologetic was like, let's do this. And I was like, okay, let's see. <laughs> let's see. So if you do a thing and you want to talk about it, we'll, we'll, do a li- we'll do a live variety show once a quarter. And that tier, that pricing is going to change, right? So if you get in now, you're locked in at that pricing, but the price of the brick is going up, All right? <laughs> Uh, so I hope I did. I answer your questions, Kat. Let me scroll. I started my channel running it into snags. I need counseling about my topic. Don't need, I don't need counseling about my topic, just logistics on how to do it. Okay. Then join the challenge and Clarice will walk you through it. Yeah. Clarice will walk you through it. If you, yeah. Yeah, because there's no need for me to, I don't think making a YouTube video about that is helpful because there are other YouTube videos out there. Other people have talked about it. So yeah, if you're in the challenge, Clarice will walk you through that. I brought in somebody. This is another way that I'm embracing ease. I brought in somebody to do the things that I cannot do. I am, this is, I'm in my wheelhouse right now, giving information, uh, but Walking people through steps, my mom can attest you to. (laughs) Walking people through certain things, I needed needed support. I needed somebody else who could do those kinds of things. (laughs) I needed Clarice. My mom can attest to how, I'm like, mom, just do this, right? I am a just do this type of person. If you need, uh, even for my YouTube Success Society, the monthly group coaching program, even for them, I had to bring someone in to help them with, um, some things with, because I'm like, just do it. Just suck it up. Right. (laughs) 
I'm going to push you, right? I'm like, just suck it up, just do it. But if you need some, some finessing, I had to bring someone else to do those things. Okay. I, I, I think that I'm clear on that. I think that most of you can kind of see that, right? I'm like, just do it. <laughs> okay. Which button? It should say join challenge. Let me show you guys the website. Since I showed you the t-shirts, let me show you the site. Vicarious.com slash challenge. Any questions about um, boycotting winter before we go? If you've asked a question about boycotting winter and I have not answered it, ask it again. I'm on a third party called Ecamm Live, so I don't see everything. I don't see every chat. Not even, sometimes it seems like I don't even see half. All right, this is it. Join the challenge. It's not a free challenge. I need to be clear on that as well. This is not a free challenge. You're getting coaching from me every day, group coaching from me every day. You're getting feedback on the video that you make. You're getting Clarice's tech help. So it's not a free challenge. All right, so you just click on join now and it'll take you to the page to pay. All right. If yours, pay, if your page doesn't look like this, you may need to reset, refresh your screen. If you came to this page back when it was a wait list, your thing, your cache, what is it called? Your computer may have cached. What is it called? Your computer may have cached and you may need to refresh your screen because it may still say wait list. Okay. All right. Any insight on the Bahamas? None. Anyone here have any insight on the Bahamas? <laughs> not yet. I have not yet connected my merch with Patreon. I may, I may do it and I may not. I don't know that I need to. I don't have a travel agency that I recommend. I booked my flight through the travel agency that comes with my business credit card. I use Brex as a business credit card company. And um, I used them, so no. Two hours minimum. I didn't know. I didn't know there was a minimum. Good thing I charged my laptop. <laughs> Cat's going to get blocked. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever enjoyed any minute of time out in the snow. I know that there are people who like it and then they want to leave it. Right. It looks pretty and whatever. I don't know that I've ever felt that way. I don't, I don't know. Never, never felt that way. I've had to shovel snow, right? I, I lived alone. I lived in, I lived alone in Delaware, in Wilmington. I had to shovel snow. I work nights. I work night shift at the hospital. I've had to shovel snow to get to work and then have to clean off my car and shovel snow to get out of the parking lot at work. And then shut, when I pull in at home, have to reshovel so that I can pull into my driveway. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I mean, hours of work to get in and out of my car and in and out of my driveway. I don't like it. I'm not for it. It's not for me. It's not for me at all. Hi, Ida. Ida lives in the Bahamas. What are your questions? What were your questions about the Bahamas? Ask Ida. She's right here. Hi, neighbor. <laughs> what am I going to do for fun? Um, I'm, I am here working, so I need to establish a work day. That doesn't sound fun, but I need to establish a work day before I start doing fun things. So I, need, I think I'm going to make my work hours something like 8 to 12, and there's a work remote work space that I'm going to go to to work. I need to establish my work hours before I start having fun. But like I said, Claire from the Netherlands is getting here on Monday. So most likely I'll do at least a boat tour with her, like a snorkeling trip, a snorkeling tour with her. There's good snorkeling and there's like some sort of abandoned rusty ship under the water that you can snorkel around. So we'll probably do that. Mostly I'm just here to work and eat. And like I'm here, it's, it's still a work time. This is not a... Um, this is not a vacation or a sabbatical. This is work time. This is a work. And this is the time of year when I like to do work. There are times that I have a, like a natural flow when I feel like doing things and when I feel like not doing things. And this is a time when I do feel like doing things. So I'm doing things. I, but yeah, I'm here to work and I'll probably, probably be working four or five hours a day, like 
which is a lot for me. <laughs> so I'll probably be working seriously because I need to, we need to raise this money. I'm going to be hollering at sponsors and that's part of work, right? Hollering at sponsors. Um, um, I've got to create some content for YouTube that will help you to bring in new subscribers who will then become new Patreon patrons, right? That's work. Uh, the challenge, right? I'm running the challenge in February, not in March. Um, and then society. So I run a YouTube success challenge. And then after you finish the YouTube success challenge, you get invited into YouTube success society, which is monthly group coaching. Uh, so I have things that I have to do. And then Exodus, Exodus, we're going to Turkey. So Rashida and I need to plan the Exodus meetup while I'm here. We need to plan the Turkey meetup and uh, start getting ready. By the time I leave here, it'll be time to start preparing for the next Exodus summit, which is in September. Time to start hollering at sponsors for that. Uh, so I'm working. I, I know that I do as little as possible, but that includes working. I don't know, Inez, how I found Brex. Honestly, somebody must have said, I have them. And for somewhat, I have no business credit. So I didn't know how to establish business credit with no business credit. And when I, when I applied or whatever for them, they were like, yeah, here you go. So I guess someone said, I must have Googled how to get business credit when you don't have business credit. So no complaints, like same thing with, with, like I said, with the travel insurance companies, no complaints, but I haven't had any problems. Like I haven't had any problems that would require attention except for changing the flight. I guess the, um, the, um, travel agency, which is associated with them travel agency has been very helpful. I definitely recommend them for, for that alone, for that alone. Do I need moderators? What's happening? Tell me, what's, is there something in the chat right now or are you just talking about for the future? Let me look. I'm going to look on YouTube on my phone. I can't see the whole chat without my phone. Tell me if, the, if, if there's something. If there's some thought, someone, just holler at me. I do need a moderator, but that's another thing to add to my list. No? Just you're just saying in general. OK, let me know, though, if I because I, I can block somebody in a heartbeat. I just have to see their see their comment and it scrolls by pretty quickly. After Turkey, after Turkey, more Turkey. I'm going to be in Tur Turkey April, May and June, I think. All April, May and June. And then the summer, I would like to do some West Coast USA, West Coast Canada house sits. I think. Uh, so that's the plan, but I'm open. Um, but yeah, I think I'll be in Turkey April, May, June, and then I think late June, head to Alaska. If Terry's doing the Happy Girl Alaska is planning a, um, I just saw your face. This is Terry, Happy Girl Alaska. She's planning an ex Alaska retreat. And I would really like to do that. And then just hang out on the West Coast, go down to like Vancouver and then West Coast USA and do some house sitting around there for the summer. I think that's what my summer will look like. But like I said, I'm open and house sitting with house sitting. If something fabulous pops up, I'll take it. Even if it's just that house sit in Tampa from last summer, like seriously, I would go back to Tampa just for that house sit, even though like I've seen Tampa and whatever. Uh, I, I, a house with a pool and dogs who I like, that was a really good summer. So that's it. But, um, and then from, but in Turkey, while I'm in Turkey, I may bop over to Portugal if it's easy to start the Portugal residency process. All right. So one of the things you need to get residency in Portugal is that you need a bank account in Portugal. It's easy. You can get a bank account in Portugal while you're there as a tourist. So I may, if, if, depending on the COVID and flying in situation while I'm in Turkey, I may bop over to Portugal to do that just to get a bank account so that when it's time for me to start the residency process, I have the bank account. Hi guys. Hi, new people. We have some new friends who popped in. Hello. Hi, Anna. 
Anna Grace, how do I begin this journey of breaking up with the abusive American culture? You don't need a whole lot, uh, surprisingly, you don't need a whole lot to break up with the USA, okay? Uh, you need residency somewhere else. I was just talking about Portugal. You need residency somewhere else. So look at countries. If Okay, so I have a video called Breaking Up with the USA. It's really helpful, step by step, seriously. You need, uh, so f I think first figure out how are you going to be in that country? If you're going to be in that country on, but because you work online or work remotely or have your own business or have your own money, look at places that have that kind of visa. Countries that let people in who are not there to work. It's easier to get into a country if they know that you're not going to come there and take a job from a local, right? So if you have an online business or a remote job or just income, just cash, right? Retirement fund, savings, investment income, investment properties, right? Um, if, you, if you can get to a country and not have to work in that country, look at countries that have a good, um, they're usually called a retirement visa, but a visa for people who are not coming to work. Portugal is one that people love. Mexico is another that people love, right? Now, having said that, you don't need to start with residency. It's okay to bop around. Right. You can bop around. Being an American with a U.S. passport means most places will let you in pretty easily. So you also could start conversely just with which countries can I get into for at least 90 days. Right. Just on my U.S. passport. Right. Then I would get the work from anywhere toolkit because we have good calculators that help you calculate the cost of living in places. Whether you're talking about a place that you are going to stay for three months or a place that you're going to try to get residency in and stay forever. Uh, get the cost of living. You, use the Work From Anywhere toolkit to get some cost of living calculators, right, to, to do that research. So let me link to that toolkit again. That's at exodushomecoming.com slash toolkit. All right. So decide on where you're going based on their entry requirements. Decide on how you're going to fund it. Are you going to work online? Are you going to work remotely? Do you already have the money? You don't need to worry about it. Uh, decide uh, what places fit into your budget. Use these cost of living calculators like the Earth Awaits and Nomad List and check out where what fits into your budget. Where can you go based on your budget? And then... Find short-term accommodation there. Airbnb is probably the easiest, or VRBO, probably the easiest. Find short-term accommodation. Get yourself some travel medical insurance, right? Until you, in, or you may, yeah, get the insurance that that country requires, right? Some countries require a little more robust insurance for new people. And then get yourself there and get a more long-term accommodation. Number six, get yourself a community. Join the community of expats in that place. Join a community of people who have moved there already, right? If you're on Facebook, that's the easiest place to find groups of expats. For most cities that you're going to want to go to, there are expat groups and there are black expat groups and there may even be mom expat groups in, that, in those cities. So get in those groups. Those people will help you. They have information that you need and don't even know you need. Uh, yeah, there were eight steps and I got six, but there's a video called Breaking Up with the USA right here on my channel. I don't know. I can't think of what the other two were, but those are the, but they're, those are the beginning steps, right? These are, this is something that if you have, if you have online income or a job, there are people who can be out in a few months, like a few weeks, a few weeks, right? You got to figure out what you're going to do with your apartment. That was probably one of them. Number seven, figure out what you're going to do with your home, apartment, whatever, your stuff, your home and your stuff. Figure out what you're going to do with your home and your stuff. Get a plan. And that plan should not be put it in storage because you're going to be gone for three years. Okay. You think you might be gone for six months. You're going to be gone for three years. You're going to be paying for stuff in storage. You are not going to remember what it is. So get a plan for your stuff. 
Kat, I don't, this is not going to work. Just book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. The challenge is not going to work. Okay. I've told you if you can't, if the link is not working for you, uh, don't take, don't do the challenge. Get some one-on-one -on -one time. Okay. Vicarious.com slash call me. Yeah. If this isn't, if this is not working, if you need more individual attention, then here's the link to the challenge. Then what you need to do is book a one-on-one -on -one call with me and you can have some individual attention. The, cha the challenge is for people who are able to have a little more autonomy, okay? If you need more hand-holding, I offer more hand-holding, okay? And that is through a one-on-one -on -one call at vicarious.com slash call me. It's hard, Jessica. It's hard, but we're moving. We're making progress. The declutter challenge from December is still on. I need to rename it. It's called the December declutter challenge, but it's still on. Right. So we're still doing it. My phone is still raggedy. My phone is still full of stuff, still full of emails, still full of pictures. I have a brand new phone in my suitcase. I'm not opening it until I get rid of the stuff on this phone. All right. You're welcome, Anna Grace. OK, so this is what we do. We work. We make progress towards these things. So I said it's important that we have a vision for our life, but it's important that we make progress towards that vision. Yeah. OK, so this, these are the steps I, as far as I know. If your vision is taking a sabbatical or moving abroad or becoming a digital nomad and bopping around a little bit, as far as I know, those are the beginning steps. So fine, pick one of those and make some progress on it. Give yourself a deadline. Put it on your calendar when you're going to actually work on that thing and do it. And then report back, please. My favorite part, report back. Yes, keep us posted. We're still doing it. We're still decluttering. We're not going to let that stuff win. <laughs> DNW, DW and Company. House sitting works for couples. House sitting works for families, people with children. I just ha We just had a woman in Exodus Summit in the Facebook group who house sat with her partner, maybe husband, and child. The three of them house sat as a family. It works because the people you're house sitting for likely are a couple, right? Most I don't know. Most people seem to be in couples, right? They don't mind having two house sitters, having a couple house sitter house sit for them because they're a couple or they don't mind having a family house sit for them because they're a family. I interviewed Tanaj and Tino here on this channel. So if you look up my house sitting videos here, you'll see them. But I need to do a new I need to get a new a new house sitting couple or family. So I, I did interview Tanaj and Tino about them house sitting as a couple. And basically, spoiler alert. No problems. <laughs> no problems. People like couples. <laughs> People like couples. Yeah, it takes time. We're not, um, we're not, with $700? I don't know what you're talking about. We're t it takes time. Um, look, I don't know what the $700 means. Seven hundred dollars for three hours. Oh, the flight! You might must be talking. That sounds to me like someone asking about a flight. Oh, a daily consultation. I don't think it's seven hundred. Must be. I don't think it's seven hundred dollars. Um, chat. Maybe the chat. So Adelia's doing a couple of things, right? So Adelia also offers one-on-one -on -one coaching. Adelia is Picky Girl Travels the World. She helps black women get their FU money together, okay? If you need to get your money together so that you can say FU to your job or to your country or to a relationship, right? Adelia is the person to see. Adelia Abor Shade, who is Picky Girl Travels the World. But she offers a handful of different, a, a, a suite. She has a suite of package of, of, of services, right? So she does one-on-one -on -one counseling and coaching. She also does, uh, she has a new investment um, challenge for first-time investors, first-time women investors. I have a link, if you'll bear with me. So there's a suite of packages. So I don't know what you mean, what, you, what your question is about that. But I know women, if anyone here has had... Uh, Anyone here who has booked time with Adelia, if you drop a word about how helpful it was so that our sister, whose name I lost, will know if it's worth her time and effort. Uh, let me find Adelia's link.
Get Started Investing is a seven-day challenge. And I'm about to pull it up. PickyGirlTravels.think PickyGirlTravels.thinkific.com. Get started investing seven day. Ooh, my puff is too tight. As my hair dries, my thing gets tighter and tighter. <laughs> Y'all might see me come out of this in a minute if we're not done. Okay, get started investing is Adelia's seven day challenge. PickyGirlTravels.thinkific.com. If you're looking for her entire suite of packages, she would be at PickyGirlTravelsTheWorld.com. Again, she helps Black women get their f money together. If you need to say good, if you need the money, get your money together so you can say goodbye to something that's no longer serving you. Do it. Okay. Don't let money be. The, the holdout. Don't let money, just like we already talked about, your job is not the boss of you. Don't let money be the boss of you. Okay? Get it together. All right? Kat, I'm on a Mac. I don't know why you're asking me this. I'm a little concerned. Okay? <laughs> I'm on a, I'm on a uh, Mac. Okay, good question. For dance sake, do you have to already have products or services developed for this challenge? Do you have, to, if you have a YouTube channel already? No, no. You need to know, to go into the challenge ready to go. You need to know who your channel is for. Therefore, you need to know who your products and services are for. Okay? Even if you don't have products and services yet. The chat, so... The challenge is actually, it is still helpful for women who have a YouTube channel and don't want to offer products and services. You just want your YouTube channel to be the end point. It's still helpful for that, but frankly, I don't know. I think it's still helpful, but. I don't know. I don't know that you need, if you just want a YouTube channel just to have a YouTube channel and you're not selling anything, right? You're not creating, a, you don't have a business, you're not running a business. The challenge is still helpful. Uh, but, uh, but you'd have to be willing to invest money without seeing how you're going to get the money back. Okay? If you do one on one coaching, and you invest $67 in a challenge, you know how you're going to get $67 back, right? Get a coaching call. Book a, book a coaching call. Money made back, right? If you're, if you're not yet monetized in any way, then investing in your channel is more of a leap of faith, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with you taking a leap of faith. I just, I don't do it. I don't invest money in things that don't bring me a return. You know what I'm saying? I hope that's okay. But that wasn't your question. Do you have to have products or services already? No, no. You have to have either have a YouTube channel already or be willing to launch a YouTube channel during that week. That's it. Okay. But you need to be clear on who you help with your channel, who your channel is for. If you're not yet clear on who your channel is for, you may want to stop, book a call with me one-on-one -on -one to do that before you come over. Okay. All right. What you get with this. Okay. So the society is coaching from me, right? Get group coaching from me. You get some tech support from Clarice, but you also get a community of women who also have businesses serving women. And that's a wonderful thing. We just don't get to see, I'm spoiled because I have Rashida and I have Adelia and I have women who do this kind of thing in this world. But a lot of you are out here alone. And you don't have the support system. You don't have community. You don't even have anybody to ask a question, right? When I looked for Adelia's link, I went to our text chain because she, asked, she we ask each other questions. Um, and you don't have that. If you don't have that and you're out here feeling alone in your business world, join the challenge. You're going to meet women. We capped the challenge at 100. I don't know if we're going to get to 100 this time. We had 80. We had 300 and something the first time. And then we had 80 something the second time, but that was an 8 p.m. challenge. Nobody, nobody wanted to start work at 8 p.m., right? This one, 3 p.m., 
uh, I'm not sure if we'll hit 100, but we'll get close. We'll get very close to 100 women who do something like what you do, even if they don't do the exact same thing. Nobody in the challenge is like, nobody talks to my audience. I'm the only person here who talks to women recovering from a narcissistic, abusive relationship. No, you're not. We had probably three or four other women in the last challenge who covered that same thing. Nobody's like, I, don't, I help women invest in art. We actually had two or three art investing channels in the challenge, right? You're going to meet someone who is doing something who, for the same group of people that you serve, and you're going to be able to meet your Rashida, right? You're going to be able to meet the person who you're going to go forward and do some projects with, some things that are too big for you to do alone or too scary to do alone. If you join the challenge and you come and you communicate with the other women in the challenge, the second time we did it, we actually did rooms. We broke off into Zoom rooms after the end of the coaching calls so that they could talk to each other. Um, if you meet, if you come to the challenge, you stick with us, you don't drop out. You will not only will know how to teach the YouTube algorithm, how to bless you when it's time, but you'll also have a new community of women who are out here doing the work that you do, uh, who you can talk to when you need talk, who you can support when you want to support, you know, that's a wonderful unintended result, I think. In the beginning, it wasn't my original intention for running the challenge, but man, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's a wonderful result. Being able to come see these women coming come away from the challenge with a business, not a business partner, but like a business accountability buddy, if nothing else. Coming away with an accountability partner where every week or every so often we can get together we can complain about things. We can make work on things. We can do a co-working session. Rashida and I, Rashida Adelia and I, and I do a co-working session where we, she's like, okay, we get on Zoom. Okay, let's work for, she makes me work for two hours. Every time I'm like two hours. Why is the session two hours? But we are co-workers. We get to co-work. I, I write the newsletter during those sessions and do the things that I'm always like, oh, I got to do this, right? We get together during those sessions and we do those things. These are the kinds of people that you'll meet in the challenge. I already know because I've seen it. <laughs> uh, like I said, the first challenge was 300 and that was unruly. That challenge is a little unruly. But the second challenge, 100, we had 80, 80 something women. Thanks to Nyrell. <laughs> I saw you wave. 80 something women. Thanks to Nyrell who asked for an evening challenge. 80 something women who got to meet someone who talked to their audience and got to bounce ideas off of them. It's good. It's good. You should be there. <laughs> you should be in the YouTube success challenge. Okay. Okay, for house sitting. I've house sat in uh I've house sat in Northern California. Actually, I've house sat in Southern California. Yeah, so I'd like to do a West Coast. I'd like to leave Alaska and then just house sit my way down. I, popped, I looked at a couple lakes in Canada on my map and I put them, I saved those searches in Trusted House Sitters. So if anybody who lives near those lakes needs a house sitter, I will get notified, right? So I got my Trusted House Sitters notification set. I don't think I set one for, and I, I want to go to what is Oregon and Washington. I don't think I've set alerts for there yet, but I need to do those as well. So I have Alaska alert set and then like Western Canada you know, north of Vancouver and north, all of that. I have alerts set so that if something pops up, I can get it. Yeah, I think that's going to be my summer this year. We'll see, because Canada didn't play around when it came to COVID last summer. They were like, no, y'all can't come. So we'll see if I'm allowed to go. But we'll see. That's a good point, Katrina. Katrina says you might think of products along the way, because you're going to hear from women about what they're doing. That happens to me all, every time. I'm like, oh, I was listening to, listening to the Donald Miller podcast, um, business. It used to be called Story Brand. Now it's called something else. And he had he was coaching a lady, and I was like, 
oh, I'm doing that. Like I'm, t- I'm done. I'm doing this. <laughs> Something I had no intention of doing, no idea about, no thought about. I hear someone else and I'm like, I'm doing that. I'm doing it. Yeah. So you'll, you would, that's a great point. You will hear what other women are doing in their businesses and it will help to give you some, um, ideas, right? Some ideas, some ideas that you'll try, some ideas that you'll cross off, some things that you'll never want to do. Someone will say something, you'll be like, that sounds terrible. I would never do that. Right. Yeah. I do. Oh no. Long sleeve shirts. I don't have long sleeves, but I can look, Andrea, and see. I can add some long. I can see if I can add some long street, long sleeve shirts. There are sweatshirts. Yes, there are sweatshirts at uh, vacarious.com slash merch. Vacarious.com slash. Thank you very much for asking. Vacarious.com slash merch. You can get a this sweatshirt gives black women a break shirt. Yes. Uh, and the money from the merch goes to the Vacarian sabbatical fund. Right now we're raising $25,000 to send Maisha Francis on sabbatical. Raising it. We're getting there. <laughs> All right. Boycott winter. Hi, Lala. I think um, in the U.S., the easiest cities to get started are, uh, well, Northern and Southern California, Washington, D.C. area, Atlanta now, Atlanta's become more popular, and New York, uh, and maybe even Austin. Those are the easiest to find house sits at any time. But anything could pop up anywhere at any given time. So the best thing to do is set alerts. Once you get your membership, once you're ready to get started house sitting, right? Don't get your membership too far in advance. But once you're ready, most house sits book six, eight, six to eight weeks ahead of time. They book six to eight weeks before the person's leaving. So once you're ready to get started, get your membership and then set alerts for the areas that you want to go to. Okay. So in the U S those are the most popular, but worldwide London, all of England, all of England, they, they believe in it. They believe in traveling long-term. They believe in having pets. They believe in having house sitters. A lot of Canada, um, a lot of Australia in Mexico, the, the two most popular places I would say for house sitting are uh, Ahihik slash Lake Chapala near Guadalajara and um, San Miguel de Allende because those are pla- places that are popular with American and Canadian expats. But a lot of places, a lot. So look, look, look on the app, look on Trusted House Sitters. You can see what's out there. You can see where most of the house sits are. So yes, it's easier to get started in a place with most with more house sits, but it's also you could just book a house sit in a random place. One of my first clients, she lived in DC, and I was like, "You have to start in DC. You have to start in DC." Don't you know she booked her first house sit in Johannesburg, South Africa? Right. So anything can happen. Anything can pop up. All right. Thank you very much, Gabrielle. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. So like I always say, this doesn't work if I'm just talking to myself, if there's nobody here. We don't do anything. We don't get anything done if y'all aren't here. So thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate you taking your time, spending your time with me on Saturday mornings. I appreciate the giving and sharing that you do. Um, I appreciate the way that you communicate with each other and talk with each other in the chat. I'm very thankful for that. Okay. Everyone who has already joined the Patreon, we might, um, do y'all, I need to eat some breakfast. Is today a good day for us to do a quick, like, how is this going to work type Patreon call? Or should I wait? I should have probably emailed that maybe tomorrow. Let's see today or tomorrow. Is it, I've taken up enough of your time. Maybe do do y'all have time tomorrow to do a quick, like, here's how this is going to work. Patreon call, like a quick I'll give you a couple seconds to answer. Pick Saturday or Sunday. If it's Sunday, it'll be sun- Sunday sometime. What's on my calendar for Sunday? It'll just be a quick Patreon chat about how it, how this is going to go. <laughs> uh, right now, I don't have anything on my calendar for Sunday. So it would probably be around around this time, Sunday morning.
<laughs> Leave me alone. Bugs. Okay. Today is good. Tomorrow. Okay. One for each. <laughs> One for each. Sunday. Okay. So Sunday, we'll do a quick Patreon um, get together. We'll do it over on Zoom. So I'm going to send you the link on Patreon. This is my first time doing something like this. Okay. So be patient with me. I'm going to send you the link on Patreon patrons. And I think I can also email you. I think Patreon lets me email you. So, uh, hi, Connie Robinson. Hi guys. Okay. More of you are here than I saw. Okay. Sunday. Okay. So I'm going to send you the link on Patreon and I'm going to email you separately. I don't know what notifications look like. I don't know. So before, sometime before tomorrow, if you don't see it already, look for it. You'll have to go to the Patreon at patreon.com slash vicarious. Go and look for it. Patrons. Okay. Patrons. Okay. Thanks for letting me know that Sunday is better. I turn that light off. Oh, <laughs> I'm sweating. Okay. Thank you guys for hanging out. So we've talked about what you need to boycott winter. Okay. We've talked about a lot of other things as well. And we've talked about the YouTube success challenge, which is happening. Vacarious.com slash challenge. And most importantly, we've talked about raising $25,000 for Maisha Francis for the, for her sabbatical. Please join me in that. You can join me in that by giving one time on cash app S Perry right? No, dollar sign S Perry 302. If you want to give one time, dollar sign S Perry 302. But I think it's more fun if you join our Patreon. Okay. If you join our Patreon, it's going to be more better, <laughs> more better. So join the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash vicarious. Okay. That's all I have from Curacao now. Maybe next time we get together, I will have done something. And I'll be able to like tell you about Curacao. <laughs> Com slash vacarious. Okay. I think um, we covered it today. I somebody some I hope I have recruited you to Team Boycott Winter. I hope. Okay, you don't need this. <laughs> you don't need winter. You don't need it. Okay. So let's work on how. We can get winter out of our lives. I've gotten it out of my life. And don't I look better for it? Remember how I looked last week in, or two weeks ago in Mexico? My mom was like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with your face? <laughs> your eyes. What's wrong with your eyes? I was like, I don't know, girl. I'm not happy. But I feel happy here. Okay? So don't. if we need some sun in our lives, some weather, some boycotting of winter. I hope I've helped you work out how you in particular can boycott winter. Okay. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Patrons, I'll see you tomorrow. Everyone else, I'll see you at least Saturday. I may do some lives on Instagram this week to get some, um, to do some more talking about the YouTube challenge, but I'll see you guys at least next Saturday. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, friends. Bye.